Talking financial organization and a professional practice does not have to be boring. Are you ready for a few money in, money out ideas? It's Susan Gunn coming directly to your head to make you think. Can you handle the truth? Because she is known for being energetic, laughs a lot, and gives honest, sometimes direct, but always practical advice. It's time now for Money In, Money Out. Welcome back to another presentation of In the Embezzlement News. I know you guys wait for these presentations. I think they're the most listened to podcast of any. So I know it's because we get to talk about embezzlement. One of my presentations on embezzlement is called Unrelenting Greed. Not one of my embezzlement cases, by the way, has the embezzler truly been in need. In need from a spouse losing a job or a chronically sick child. It's all been greed. Most often, the embezzler has gotten themselves into debt because there were bigger, more expensive things that they wanted. Not that they needed. They just had to have them. One of my embezzlement cases, in fact, drove a Jaguar just months before getting caught. That was really bizarre. We've been watching this fraud case with the same interest. We recognize the symptoms of the one that we're going to talk about today of the illness, so to speak. And here to join me is my certified fraud examiner colleague, the co-host, I believe I should call her, of the In the Embezzlement News, Janice Jansen. Hey, Janice. Hi, everybody. How are you? Well, I don't think we're going to hear them answer. You don't think? <laughs> no, How are you? I, I, I'm good. How are you doing? Okay, good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> as we know, since we've been talking, as we always do, about 30 minutes before we ever start recording, Right. (laughs) Yeah, we're pretty excited about this. In fact, we've done a lot of deep diving on this case. Um, Today, we're going to talk about Todd and Julie Chrisley. I don't know if you guys have heard about that, but who this month, just this month, were found guilty of federal bank fraud and tax evasion that involved taking out fraudulent loans to fund their lavish lifestyle. This case, by the way, is about as baffling as the fruitcake case. It's amazing. Or the horse ranch, right? The horse ranch yes. case, Janice? That horse ranch one was crazy. Oh, my gosh. That was uh, that one was very interesting. And this one is, too. I mean, it, it is. How do you go from having a TV show to being convicted on federal bank fraud and tax evasion charges? Well, and it kind of all started when they were before they even had the TV show. So you would think having the TV show, they would have made some money and didn't need to do all that. Well, or that would kind of backpedal and maybe pay off those loans, you know, before. Yeah, it's interesting. More debt. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. So, you know, let's take a step back. Let's talk about Todd. Michael Todd Chrisley, a.k.a. Todd was born in Georgia and raised in Westminster, South Carolina. He was previously married to his high school girlfriend, Teresa Terry, before marrying Julie in 1996. He has two kids with Teresa and three kids with Julie. Todd is Julie's second husband after an earlier marriage to her high school boyfriend. She's also from South Carolina and is the daughter of a Baptist minister. She has three children with Todd, Chase, Savannah, and Grayson. So what's interesting to me is Todd started as a Georgia real estate tycoon, which evolved, supposedly evolved, and that's how he got tapped for doing this TV show called Chrisley Knows Best, which first aired in March 11th, 2014. Remember that date, 2014, March 11th. It was first filmed in Roswell and Alpharetta, Georgia, and then it moved to Nashville, Tennessee for the fourth season. The family members are cast members. You know, I can I, I just have to say something. I have never understood reality TV. Me either. <laughs> I just, it doesn't, I, I don't know. I I don't get it. I don't get watching it. 
No. I I don't watch a lot of reality TV. I think I like to have a story to get me out of my, out of reality, you know? (laughs) Right. I want something to distract me. Right. Exactly. Like I'm a reader, but I like watching TV, but you know, I don't know. I've just never really gotten into rail. never got into uh, the island, abandoned, whatever those wilderness things are. Yeah. Can you the tell? Oh, Survivor. Survivor. Survivor yeah. Yeah. There we was... watched that the first season it was on, and then I haven't watched it since then. And I think it's probably in its 15th or 20th season. I don't know. Yeah. And then there was the race, the big race. Oh, you know, yes. We yes. Had, we had some local kids of, of a guy I know, went to high school with whose kids were on that. And so that's probably the only time I watched it. I watched them. Oh yeah. And um I mean there's others, but I just I I don't understand. No, I don't either. I know the housewives ones, you know, those are supp- <laughs> those I can't watch either. So. Oh my oh my gosh, I have to tell you about this time. This is, this is really weird. This was on a flight and I was flying back from no, I was going to California. I was flying to California and there was, I was sitting next to a family and uh, I was in the bulkhead and it was the father and his daughter next to me and the wife and the son behind them in the next row. And they had been to New York, very long story short. I was asking them what they did when they went to New York and they said, well, we just kind of hung out in the hotel room. And I went, you did what? You're in New York City. What do you mean you hung out? You d- you didn't go anywhere. You did. You didn't go to a Broadway show. You didn't. And I started asking all these questions. They said no, no. And the daughter chimed and said she was probably about fifteen, sixteen. She goes, "We went to the Jersey Shore three times." And I went, "Oh." And they go, "We watched that show. We were hoping to run into them." Oh my goodness. That was the whole point of their vacation to run into some of the people that they see on TV on the Jersey shore. Yeah. Wow. Anyways, they probably watch this show. Probably, probably. (laughs) But you know, Chris Lee knows best. We're going to (laughs) talk about that. So the family members are cast members. Let's talk about, and, and I'm going to say we are only talking about them because they are cast members. I feel bad for the kids. Oh, I, for sure. I, yeah, yeah. I feel really badly for the kids. Yeah. Lindsay is Todd's oldest daughter with his ex-wife. Kyle is Todd's oldest son with his ex-wife. And Chase is Todd's and Julie's oldest son. Savannah is Todd and Julie's oldest daughter. Grayson is Todd and Julie's youngest son. And then Chloe is Kyle's young daughter, who's being raised by her grandparents <coughs> due to some problems that Kyle's had. Right. Nanny is Todd's mother, who enjoys gambling and drinking. This was a quote, I think this came from Wikipedia. She is annoyed by Todd's uh, frequent interference with her plans, which he does in an effort to protect her and keep her out of trouble. Maybe she should have done that too. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to say she didn't protect him and keep him out of trouble enough, right? Right. Man, that was, that, that's a tough one. Yes. So the name of their TV reality show, we're going to discuss that for a few seconds, (laughs) knowing what we know now. Right. Chris Lee knows best. But does he? <laughs> but but does he? Do, oh I mean, just let that sink in. You got a TV show that Chris Lee knows best. I'm not sure that I have enough self-confidence to say that Susan knows best. Yeah, me either. I don't feel like I know best. I feel like I'm always learning. Right. I mean, it's, it's kind of... Um, A little arrogant, maybe? Oh, I think he's definitely arrogant, yes. (laughs) You think? Yeah, I'm thinking. (laughs) Uh, I've only seen, like, commercials, and I'm thinking that. 
Oh, I saw the commercials. I yes. actually, just to let you know, I tried to watch some of the episodes. Did you? Yeah. How did that go? It didn't work out? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> no. It did not. It did not at all. Um, so... Um, I, I, again, I'm not much of a fan of TV reality, reality TV. Anyway, it's all stage. It's all scripted. Right. And you can tell with their show, it's 100% staged. Oh yeah. The stuff that I saw, I was like, okay, this I is all it. scripted. In fact, one of the things that I read about him is he's so claustrophobic. And then I watched an episode of his claustrophobia. Now, truly, I mean, that could be an issue for him. And I'm not making fun of that. Right. Um, I'm not definitely not making fun of the fact that he's a germaphobe because I feel that way when I get on planes and have always been that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I'm a like bit the, of a germaphobe too. Yeah. I, uh, I think it comes with my traveling. I tend to wipe things down when I get on the plane and always have even before the pandemic. So, but he, he likes to avoid things like dirt and animals and, Things yeah. like that. Right. But anyways, nothing for you to add. Oh, on the germaphobe thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm a, I'm a germaphobe too, but I don't, it's weird because I don't wipe things down or anything like that. I just, um, it's washing my hands constantly. I figured oh, it was well. just the dental hygienist in me, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> yeah. It could be. <laughs> But, well, at the yeah, pandemic, I mean, probably put everybody over the edge on that. For sure. And your hands were all cracked because yeah. you had <laughs> using the germex right. and all of that stuff. So, yep. So, you know, I the whole fraud thing, uh, let's talk about exactly what happened before March of 2014. Right. It was in 2012. Right. As early as I saw 2007. Right. Oh, according, that's right. Yes. Yeah. According to the something. Department of Justice's press release. Right. Um, they allegedly it was 2012 conspired. that they found it. Right. Yes. Or that they started looking into it. That's that, what it was. That yeah. was the end of it. Right. Right. That's the weird thing. So 2012, they allegedly conspired to defraud numerous banks by providing false information. Okay, this isn't the first time we've seen stuff like this come up. I mean, no. we had the whole housing crisis, the whole the whole uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac uh, fraud. Right. Of people claiming to earn more income so they could qualify for a bigger house loan, and then they end up being upside down in the market. Right. I mean, that's not, you know, they, so the Chrisleys, provided uh, personal and financial statements and fabricated bank statements when they were yeah. applying for, and they didn't just receive a house loan. Did you ever oh, find wow. out how much it was? Did you see? I thought it was $30 million or something like that. I feel like over what? that time 20, frame. 20 million. I just 20 saw million. in my notes. Okay. Yeah, 20 yeah. million. Yeah. I knew it was millions. 20 yeah. million. Again, right. not just a little house loan. Right. That must have been some fabrication. How, I, that's what I don't understand is how do you even do that? Such a big fabrication like that. For $20 million lo in loans? And then it, they filed bankruptcy with that $20 mil, you know, for the $20 million, So Oh, that's just, I couldn't believe that. So I know. Remember, their first show aired in 2014. So that's what's very interesting to me. Was there nothing out there about this, you know, if they were investigating in 2012? Well, or being they, investigated in 2012, you know, it's like, wow. Well, they were living large. They so sure were. They got attention. Right. So that's true. So they said they used uh according to the to the documents, the DOJ press release, they said that they used much of the proceeds for their own personal benefit. Okay, well, that wasn't a big surprise, right? Right. 
So in 2014, two years after the bank fraud scheme ended, they allegedly used fabricated bank statements and a fabricated credit report that had been physically cut and taped or glued together when they applied for and obtained a lease for a house in California. See, I don't even understand that because don't you just get it online? Don't the banks just get it online? How do you even fabricate the credit report? Well, not only that, I I recently refinanced my house last year. And I had to sign a statement, actually it's a document, that they can check my tax records. Right. So are they above that? Because they hadn't paid any taxes. (laughs) Right. (laughs) They hadn't even filed their taxes. No. So uh, where does this, that's what I don't understand, is how did that happen? I mean, that's only seven eight years ago. So that was all stuff online. Yeah, it's all then. digital. Yeah. Not only that, but they had, so this is funny to me, they had physically cut and taped and glued it together. So they got a document and they cut and, and taped it together. They didn't even use Photoshop or Illustrator to do it. Right. They didn't even try and do it on the computer. Come on. Right. That is just crazy to me. Yeah, I I thought that was, we didn't want to give anybody any ideas, by the way. Right. I mean, just, that's true. just to let you say, <laughs> we're not giving true. anybody any ideas. I don't know that you could get away with that now. I can't imagine that you could. So again, their first show aired in 2014. What is that network person thinking of? I right. couldn't believe it. Although, again... They're blowing a wad of money. They spent the money on our favorite one, luxury cars, yes. designer clothes, Look at real that estate, travel. travel. <laughs> Do you think they had horsehair mattresses? They might have. <laughs> that is just still, that just, well, no, thank you. <laughs> I can't I even that. imagine. No. no, me either. But I, I mean, real. I mean, apparently they bought some property. Yeah, I guess. Uh, and they used new fraudulent loans to pay back the old ones. Right, right. They were leapfrogging. That's almost like kiting loans. Uh, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, that's a kiting. But how do you get? More loans, I guess they've, I guess since they're fraudulent, but it's like they had to get more loans on top of the ones that they had. To pay back the old ones. Right. So after spending all that money, what did Todd do? Files bankruptcy. Look at that. And $20 million he walked away from. $20 million. $20 million in bankrupts. Yep. I just, really? 20 million. And we wonder what's wrong with our economy. I tell you. Yes. This indeed. is part of it. Uh-huh. So it also says that while he was in, this is, this is hilarious. While he was in bankruptcy proceedings, this is in 2014, Julie, again, you know, because she's a master at cutting and pasting and taping, again, <laughs> manufactured financial documents. And lied to real estate agents to obtain, wait for it, a luxury rental house in L.A. You know, because they were the Chrisleys. Right. Have to keep appearances up. Mm, Yes. And as soon as the Chrisleys began renting the house, they never paid the rent. Imagine that. Imagine that. They would have had to take out a loan to pay the rent, probably. Well, yeah. (laughs) They wouldn't be able to take out a loan because they'd file bankruptcy. Right. So the homeowner homeowner filed an eviction lawsuit for him. And, you know, one of the problems with those evictions is that for for the homeowner that's leasing it out or renting it out, it takes a good six months to get them out of the house. 
And oh, then, yeah. So they're living there probably for at least six months rent free because it's hard to get them out. Um, a friend of ours used to own property and he's like, it's unreal how long it takes to get people out. So they're well, and money. they had already lived there probably for a few months before. Right. Yeah. So right. they might've been able to stay there like my nine months. Yeah. I can, yeah. That's, and that was in 2014 right. and a high end property. There's another, you know, 200,000, 100,000. Right. Right. How much do you think that was renting for? I was going to look that up and I never did. Oh God. High end property rental in, in, uh, in LA. LA. Oh, probably yeah. $10,000 a month. Yeah, that's what I was thinking at least. Yeah. Maybe more than that. 15, right. 20. Right. So, I mean, I, I couldn't, it just gets, you just kind of go and they still have a TV show. That's what I'm, isn't that right. amazing? Oh yeah. And, and they Chris keep Lee's, getting new TV shows. <laughs> right. And, and Chris Lee knows best. Yes. I mean, you just want to go, really? So around the time that Todd filed bankruptcy, that's when they became the stars of their reality TV show. Right. The evidence at the trial, this is amazing showed that while they were earning the millions from their TV show, that their accountant, now we're going to talk about CPAs, <laughs> so conspired to defraud the IRS. Okay, I just like to say, if you have a CPA that is encouraging you to be unethical and illegal, <laughs> you need right. to walk away. But I had read somewhere that they um, they were they were asking like they they were looking for somebody that would do that because um, somebody gave them Peter Tarantino's name. The oh, really? CPA. Yes. Yeah. I read that somewhere where it was like they somebody said, oh, we'll talk to this guy. He can help you. Um, basically pay less in taxes or not pay taxes or whatever. So yeah. oh, we have, we hear about all those CPAs that help them pay less in taxes, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Now, sometimes that is, that is helpful. Sure. Well, and sometimes there, there are ways, you know, that, that, yeah. are, that are legal to do that. It's right. The, it's the Ill illegal part that we're talking about here. Right. So. Defrauding the IRS is never a good idea. No, not so much. No. And it <laughs> happens all the time. Goodness gracious. So I looked up Peter on cpaverify.org where you can verify your CPA status. That is cpaverify.org just to make sure that people, because I've had cases, I've had fraud cases where somebody in the practice has embezzled and the doctor thought that the CPA was a CPA. Their accountant was a CPA and their accountant was not a CPA. Right. Right. So CPA verify.org. You know, well, you, you want to verify your, you know, if, if we've got Dennis listening to this too, we you've, you want to verify the licenses of your hygienists and your assistants and, and your associates as well. Because we've had, um, we've heard that too, where a hygienist had said she got her license and it, they looked it up, but it was under somebody else's, it, there were two people with that same name. And oh. so they didn't look far enough into it to see that it wasn't actually her. So wow. you have to, you have to make sure that they are licensed also. So. I digress. I was just uh, with that. Well, verified. I know that's a, that's their bonus for the day. That's right. Their, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's their freebie. <laughs> that's right. So um, Peter's Georgia license is still active, but um, he was just convicted. He was convicted too. All three of them were, right. uh, but maybe, I don't know when they uh, suspend a license or, put them in a suspension or whatever, but maybe that doesn't happen until after sentencing. I'm not really sure. It might not. And they're and, not going to be. And even when we, 
it was pretty quick after that you looked him up on there. So yeah, it may be. It I don't think they're going to be sentenced in, until October or something like that. I think so. Yeah. But on a national radio program, I think this is hysterical or sad. I don't know. <laughs> right. Sometimes people say things that they shouldn't. <laughs> and on a national radio program, Todd publicly proclaimed, publicly, and this came out to bite him in the rear uh, at the trial, quote, obviously the federal government likes my tax returns because I pay 750000 to $1 million just about every year so the federal government doesn't have a problem with my taxes, end quote. But guess what? But wait, there's more. <laughs> Janice, did they ever file taxes? No. Well, I mean, I guess they did at some point, but uh, 2013, 14, 15, and 16, they did not. So I don't know what he was talking about when he said he was paying the federal government. No. But he didn't even file his taxes. Nope, definitely not for any of those years. Right. Instead, the Chrisleys and Tarantino took steps to obstruct the IRS construction efforts, which, you know, kind of like uh, the fruitcake, you know, right. trying to hide, trying to hide your income. Right. Um, and I guess um, Dixon did that too. Dixon, Illinois did that. Try to hide the income, lying to third parties about tax returns, and which is not smart. Uh, Peter should have known better. He lied to the FBI and the IRS. Right. That that's not that's illegal. You can't right. lie to the FBI. Right. They can lie to you, but you can't lie to them. Sure. <laughs> not a good idea. No, that's two not a good ideas. Defrauding the IRS, not a good idea. Lying to the FBI. Yeah, my, yeah. my, my, my. And then we've got the the cut and paste, the cut and, and tape. <laughs> yeah. the credit report. Yeah, so never a good not, idea not either. Good ideas. <laughs> cut, cut, tape and paste. You're right. <laughs> so had mm-hmm. you ever, before this came out, have you ever heard of a loan out company? No, I had not. Had you? Uh Uh-uh. I've never heard that term. No, me neither. I'm I'm not really in the entertainment industry, although speaking, I could see where this would be part of the the loan out company industry. I can see it. it. Yeah. But I had never heard that before. I had neither. It's used uh, primarily by the entertainment industry, but they loan out the talent and they're paid, uh, the talent is then paid by the loan out company. And it's for temporary gigs, not ongoing gigs. Right. And so what they did is develop a loan out company. And as I understand it, it kind of operates as an umbrella company. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. A one person company arrangement for the personal services of the owner. Yeah. And they file as an escort. So I thought it was interesting. And I'm, I was going, I guess we could call ourselves a loan out company. We loan out our services. Right. <laughs> yeah. That kind of sounds seedy when you say it like that, right? It, it does. It doesn't sound right. I'm just like, I don't really understand how that works exactly. Well, and there was nothing on IRS.gov, by the way. Yeah. Nothing about an official explanation of a loan out company. Which is very interesting that, as I well. I thought that in itself was very interesting. Right. The only the only detail I got was the entertainment professional becomes an employee of the corporation and the corporation loans out the services of the employee. And the company files as an S corp. S corp. That's really, I mean, essentially, that's what I do. Well, I'm that's what I was going to say. That, yeah, that would... I mean, that's kind of the way it is with any, I mean, with a lot of companies, then I would guess, right. you know, it's just the way it's just it not ever call it a loan out company. Right. But okay. So the reason for the understanding of that is through throughout the whole defraud, defraud, 
let's say Texas wise, defraud, <laughs> defraud, defraud. Uh, the Chrisleys operated this loan out company and received their income from the show. So the show and other entertainment things, ventures that they got into, uh, paid the loan out company. And then the loan out company paid them as employees. Right. So to evade the collection of a half a million dollars in delinquent taxes owned by Todd, the Chrisleys opened and kept the corporate bank accounts in Julie's name. Right. So that she they could hide their money. Right. One day after the IRS requested information about bank accounts in Julie's name, <laughs> the Chrisleys <laughs> transferred the ownership of the corporate bank account to Todd's mom. I know. You know, like they wouldn't find that. Right. I mean, it's not real hard to track down. <laughs> no. You just go, okay, seriously. Yes. Uh, I thought let's that was figure so that. funny. I was like, really? I mean. <laughs> How dumb do you think they are? Right. Uh, all the while, he operated the loan out company behind the scenes and controlled the company's purse. Right. I, I just, you know, you you can't make this stuff up. You can't. You can't. How many times in our embezzlement cases have we wondered they never thought they'd get caught? Right. And they well, just do some of the most stupid things. Well, and that's what I'm thinking is it's like, how how dumb do you think people, you know, how dumb do you think the IRS is for one thing? I mean, you've got people auditing that stuff. <laughs> what are you thinking when you just transfer it to mom's name? So I've had this conversation before with dentist and I'm going to go there. Did I <laughs> even put this in my notes, but I'm going to go there. You know, you and I have talked a lot about dentists keeping cash payments. Right. And not putting them in the bank, which means it didn't go into their QuickBooks. Right. And if the QuickBooks is the only reporting mechanism that they give the CPA, then the CPA never knows that essentially they stole that money, the yeah. cash payments from the practice. Right. And I've, I never will forget the first time that this came up. It was in a practice in Dallas and not dental. It was a chiropractic practice. And I, it had to have been like 20 years ago, 19 years ago. And she was using a practice software and made, made it very known that she was not putting the cash payments in the bank. Hmm. I mean, pretty definite. No, no, I don't do that. I take it home and uh, I just don't put it in there. I said, what are you hoping to gain? Right. And she said, well, I just lessen my tax burden when I do that. And I said, that's tax evasion. Do you, <laughs> do you not have any understanding of what that is? Right. And she goes, well, you know, they won't ever find out. And I went, you know, <laughs> Seriously, how stupid do you think they are? Yeah, yeah. They know that healthcare, they know if you're a doctor, if you're in medical, dental, veterinary, chiropractic, they know you operate dual software in your practice. They are not stupid. Right. And so you have got to account for every patient payment, all the income, and put it in the bank. What was the one thing we learned just a minute ago? It is not a good idea to lie to the IRS. Right. Well, and just as we've said before, Susan, when you're doing that and your team sees you doing that, then they think it's okay to, yeah. to lie about that too. And we don't want to see that happen either. No, because then they have to call us. Right. Exactly. Because that sets the stage for embezzlement. It sure now, does. To be fair probably only 25 to 30% of my cases. Something kind of maybe not on the up and up was going on. Right. But um, the rest of them were doing everything just fine. The embezzler decided to steal. I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. I'm no. just saying you don't want to set, I don't, you don't want to open the door for them and say here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So this, this next part, it was, I couldn't believe this. So the cut and paste and tape girl, <laughs> her final obstruction of justice. This was her obstruction of justice thing. 
after she heard about the grand jury investigation, you just you can't make this stuff up. You yeah, really can't. Nope. Are you ready? She submitted a fraudulent document in response to a grand jury subpoena. She submitted a fraudulent document in response to a grand jury subpoena to make oh. it appear that the Chrisleys had not lied to the bank when they transferred ownership out of the loan out company's bank account to his mom. Seriously? <laughs> how do you do that? I mean, I don't know how you sleep doing that. Just knowing that it's going to all come crashing down, you know? Well, if you think about the timing of this, they're well into their, their series reality show notoriety. Right. Right. And they're going to do everything they can not to lose that. That is true. That is true. And two, they may think that they can get away with it because of their notoriety. Well, Yeah. yeah. The IRS doesn't care. Yeah. They don't care who you are. No. Oh, in fact, I just like to say, I tell doctors this all the time. They love to make examples. Yeah. 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 So August 13th, 2019, the seventh season of the show. Show's been going on for seven seasons during all of this. They were indicted by the Department of Revenue for Georgia on tax evasion, wire fraud, and bank fraud charges. And she had the additional charge of obstruction of justice. So the evidence at trial, while they were earning millions from their TV show, they conspired to defraud the IRS. Yes, it's indeed. not enough that you're making millions, right? You I want don't. More. You got to want yeah, more. Yeah, you got them. Got them. Uh, that unrelenting greed. It is. They turned themselves in on August 14th, and they were released on a hundred thousand bond. I'm trying to figure out where they got the money for the hundred thousand bond. Right. What do you think they put up for property for that bond? Yeah, who knows? I'm surprised, actually. I'm surprised it was only a hundred thousand. Uh, yeah, I am too. Except I bet they didn't have any money. Le- you know, like it was all tied up or something. Because but it doesn't matter. But I mean, they would have been a flight risk. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm hmm. surprised, but you know, they could have a bond, uh, bail bonds. You know, they might have gotten the money from them, and then they have to pay it back. So well, they bought property. We don't know in the bankruptcy what they lost right as far as what was taken away right but um you know in spite of all the charges the series i don't know what's going to happen with their conviction but the series was renewed for an eighth season that's what i find very intriguing i you know i mean does the does the the network that they work for do are they liking it that all of this is happening and it's a bunch of Marketing maybe for they're them? maybe they're banking on people uh, queuing in to see right what happens. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. But they should change the title. <laughs> they should. You're right. <laughs> I think they have a certain societal responsibility. Yes. for saying that the Chrisleys know best. <laughs> that just doesn't seem quite right. No, it they doesn't. did settle. They did settle the case with the Georgia Department of Revenue, but they still face faced all the multiple federal charges, including the tax evasion. Um, it the trial. I thought this was interesting. The trial began on May seventeenth and ended on June seventh, so it only lasted three weeks. Right, right. So, do you think it was aired? <laughs> like like Amber and Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I don't know about that. Fiasco. Oh my goodness. That was, that sometimes felt very scripted too. It did. Yes. Yeah. I, I thought that was interesting. I bet they, I wondered if they sealed the court documents because you didn't hear a lot written about it. You only heard what the DOJ released. Yeah. Cause I couldn't find anything other than those, that information, you know, from the DOJ and that you didn't find a lot. I read lots of speculations. Right. And the other stuff that I read, it was all just 
re recounting the DOJs. So I was like, okay, well, I already know that, you know, so. Right. So uh, all convictions, uh, the convictions on all charges, they got all of them. Yeah. And they carry a potential maximum sentence of 30 years in prison. Uh, the sentencing is October 6th, right. uh, 2022, this year at 9.30 a.m. I know I'll be uh, watching with bated breath to find <laughs> out. $30 million, I think, was the, the final tally. The $30 million was the final tally. It was the $20 million that they filed bankruptcy on. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I, I can't even imagine. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I did try to find out if they ever defaulted on any of those loans. All they were convicted of was uh, the fraudulent. But did they file in the bankruptcy? Were the loans defaulted on? I would think they would have to be in order for the bankruptcy to. All across the board? I don't know. I don't know, but I would think in order for you to file bankruptcy that you would have to default on some of them because otherwise well, you're able to pay them. You know, it would only be on the twenty million, right? What about that other? Oh, 10? so the other ten? Yeah, I'm not sure about that because I wonder if they did pay those back. I don't know. Either that or there's another ten million out there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they didn't say any. Nobody has said anything. I couldn't find anything else about a second bankruptcy. Right. Well, and kind of, I just like to say, if you were the one that loaned the ten million, shame on you. Right. Exactly. After the first bankruptcy. Yeah. So you know, it amazes me. This is my personal opinion. <laughs> as if, as if nothing else in the show is. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> It amazes me how much tax evasion exists in the U.S. It's yeah. almost be it's almost like it's become a societal norm. <laughs> Let's see what you can get away with. Well, no. And, oh, you've got lots of money. Okay, well, you're probably evading taxes. <laughs> I mean, it's just it amazing be. to me. Yeah. If you have lots of money, should you be entitled to pay less taxes? Right, right. That's a philosophical statement, isn't it? I yeah, think and that so. statement that statement will probably get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I pay my fair share of my taxes. I know. That's what's hard. That is hard. And taxes are not cheap, that is for sure. No, they're not we designed all get that. to be. No. No, I just don't I I don't I don't understand the 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 mentality of trying to because you know if you're not being ethical right and you're not having integrity in your tax file all of mine is in my software I have a QuickBooks for my business software and I have Quicken for my personal software right, right. and it's I download everything into both software. I have two credit cards for my business, two credit cards for my personal. I have one bank, actually I have two bank accounts for my business, one bank account for my personal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all six lane highway between the two. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a business expense, it goes on the business credit card. If it's a personal expense, it goes on the personal card. I don't accidentally charge a personal expense on the business. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Well, and part of with you having that, I think some some of the businesses, the small businesses and that part of the problem is, is they don't know what they're doing, you know, when they first start out. So it's like, look into that stuff and figure out so that you can get it done right off the get go, because then it gets hard to to keep up with it if you've gotten behind, you know, so I just had that conversation with a new practice. Yeah. He's buying he's buying a practice. Yeah, he called me right before we were recording and said, I'm a new practice. And I said, all right, well, just make sure the bank account that you get and the credit card you get can download into your QuickBooks. And he goes, oh, well, that's good to know. I don't have a credit card yet. I said, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there you go. 
it will be a lot easier to manage that way. And it is. Oh my gosh, I just did my tax, got ready, uh, all my information ready to do taxes and sent it to my CPA on Friday, but it's so much easier because everything's so organized. Yeah, that it does make it so much easier. Yeah. 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 So um, according to the headlines, the Chrisleys are actively amping up their legal team to try to overturn the guilty verdict. But I got to say, when I read all the evidence that the DOJ had, I think that's going to be pretty hard. I think so, too. I Best of luck so. to them. Right. I hope that some of the things that we read uh, weren't true. Right. But I don't know. I I kind of have a feeling. That it is true. Yeah, the DOJ was pretty bold in putting all that out there, so. Right. There was a lot of info from them. Yeah, there was. Yeah. More than normal, again. Right. That's that's what I'm thinking. Uh -huh. They like to make a good example out of out of people that are in the highlight. That are fa famous. <laughs> yep. Yep. So our takeaways. We already said one. Deposit all your patient payments, including cash. I had a when I was doing everybody, when I first started my business 25 years ago, that sounded bad too. But when I had customers on all spectrums of business and QuickBooks was just making an entry into business, I had a construction client in, uh, west of here and he paid me in cash. And he said, now you don't have to count that. And he goes, you, you know, you can just put it in your pocket. And I said, mm, yeah, I do have to count it. <laughs> and he goes, well, no, you don't, you don't have to. And I said, yeah, I do. I do. I choose to be ethical and right. I have to be honest. Right. And I want to be legal. I don't want to start now. I'm just starting my business. Right. And so deposit all your patient payments, all your collections, all your revenue should be deposited. If you're not a doctor, dentist, veterinary, chiropractor. Everything that you gain as revenue or income needs to go into the bank. So, and from our cut, paste, and tape <laughs> person. Yes, please don't be creative when you're doing your financial uh, documents and getting loans and filing your taxes. Be on the up and up because it's only going to bite you in the end. You know, you've got to make sure that you've got that information correct. I just still, the, the, the cutting and the, the taping and all that. I like, know. Well, I and, that. and the fact that the DOJ went to such great lengths to say that. Right. I mean, that was like cut Very and paste. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it probably looked really bizarre. It probably did. Yeah. Uh, I just can't imagine. So the other thing I'd say is, Make sure your financial advisors, such as your CPA, are only encouraging integrity in your business and in your personal life. If something that they are recommending feels too good to be true, then it probably is. Yes, we don't have to go very far from Bernie Madoff to remember that, right? Right, right. Yes, if it's too good to be, sounds too good to be true. It probably is. And there's lots of them out there with have great schemes and make money on this. And, you know, you can do, you can, oh, you don't do, you can count that car. Right, and, right. And I've had them so many times say, and here's another thing. I've had them so many times say, it's, oh, my CPA told me it was okay if I put that in there. They just don't count it towards the taxes. and. And because it's a personal expense and to which I said, it's a business accounting system. If it's not business, it doesn't need to be in there to begin with. Right. And I take a pretty hard line on that for one thing, because I've had uh, clients who have died suddenly. Uh. And when all the personal is in there, then getting the value of the practice, it makes it much more difficult. Right. Um, to get the value when the personal is included. 
Well, and so again, six lane taxes, highway. Yeah. When you're doing your taxes and all of that, it's confusing for you too. Cause it's like, okay, well, are the CPA, is this personal or is this, you know, um, business? So it's just cleaner if you can keep them separate. Yep. Absolutely. And then Janice, I want you to say that last takeaway. Our last takeaway is to remember your kids and anybody that's close to you because they're watching everything that you do. And uh, it's, it is amazing. I, I, your kids are mimicking what you're doing. So please uh, think about that and your teams, you know, if you've got a team in your business, your teams are watching everything that you do also. So. I figured the one that actually has kids should talk about that. (laughs) Yes. I've got lots of them. (laughs) <laughs> you do, and they're getting older. Yes, they are. Goes too but fast. that's that's part of our modeling our behavior is realizing that everyone's watching and we have to lead with integrity. We have to choose and it has to be a discipline. It right. has to be intentional too. Sometimes it's hard. It is. But sometimes it's ex- exhausting when you're when you know that your kids are watching everything you do, you're like, Oh, geez. I know. you know, I've got to, I've got to stick with, with the punishment or stick with the, um, <laughs> you know. the tough love, <laughs> the tough love. Uh, and sometimes that's hard, but. Well, it Janice, as difference. always, this has been fun. Do you have any last parting comments that you want to share? I ideas, thoughts. Uh, I don't. I think we hit the we hit everything and our points our last points there came across so well I have a few things imagine <laughs> that imagine that <laughs> this is why I like to speak and you don't like to speak <laughs> exactly <laughs> so James just in closing I wanted to say a couple of things James Dorsey the special agent in charge of the IRS criminal investigation was quoted as saying, these convictions should send a clear message, regardless of your fame or notoriety, that everyone will be held accountable for paying their fair share of taxes. Yes, greed will most often get you more than what you bargain for. Why is it that those who do these things think they will never be caught It's amazing to me. And the victims are not just the financial institutions that were defrauded or the IRS. The true victims? You know, you only have to look at the Chrisleys to find out the true victims. They were the kids. Right. Todd and Julie's behavior has been modeled to the kids as acceptable behavior. This is how to act. Do not accept responsibility for what you did, regardless of how much evidence there is against you. Fight it. Right. Now, well, that's not right. Most listeners know that I speak on ethics. So let me borrow a couple of lines that I say in those presentations. Commit to always being the best version of yourself that you always can be. Plato said something very telling of everything. Plato said, I know that I know nothing. I think that's pretty true still. 2,400 years ago, he said, I know that I know nothing. We still don't know anything, do we, Janice? No, we're still learning every day. Yeah. So commit to being the very best version of yourself. It may be hard to do. And at many junctions of our life, to even be truthful, just as Janice said, even if it hurts. But I also wanted to leave you with something that I give away in my ethics presentations. It's from a little card. And I, when my mom passed away, I found this typed out on a pink laminated copy. And so I give them away in the ethics presentations because I feel like it's really important to keep this in mind. And I want to close with this. It's been attributed. I will say it's been attributed to John Wesley But I also have a lot of theologians that have disagreed with that. So I don't know who wrote it. Could have been John Wesley. Could have been somebody else. But here's what was said. Do all the good you can. By all the means you can. In all the ways you can. In all the places you can. At all the times you can. 
to all the people you can for as long as ever you can. So, whether you're on TV or not, keep that in mind. Do all that good. Until the next time, go out and lead with integrity. That's a wrap for this podcast of Money In, Money Out. Thanks for listening. Be sure to write down the most valuable tip you learned today so you don't forget it. And remember, you can find out more about all the valuable books and services Susan has to offer at www.susangunsolutions.com.